Strange why would they have a database that no one could ever use? That is strange. I'll see what I can find out. Daru tried every trick in the book to crack the mystery database. But after about an hour of furious typing... Ah, I don't get it, I don't get it at all! You call this a program, dumbass? Go to hell! Great, he snapped. I think you should stop. My head is spinning. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Maybe I'm pushing him too far. He's been up two days straight. He's probably at his limit. Good work. Go rest, Daru. Yeah. I'll do that. Anyway, even if it isn't a bug, but an actual program, only the guys who made it could understand it. I've never seen anything like it. A program unlike anything he's seen? Hmm. Hmm. It's from John Titer. Did he reply to the email I sent him earlier? I haven't told anyone about the IBN. There's no way he could retain memories from before the reconstruction. I gulp. <laughs> of course, everything is falling into place. What are you talking about? John Titer. Sir, the time machine. These things are all connected. And now I have another piece of the puzzle. Daru. I think I know how we can read that program. Seriously? How? I aim my phone's camera at the screen displaying the supposedly bugged data and take a picture. I attach it to a message. Does this code look familiar? And send it to Tida. A mysterious database inside CERN. A program unlike anything Super Hacker Daru has ever seen. Its true form is... If my hunch is correct, John Tida should know. Huh? What? There's no way. 
Say what you like, we'll know soon enough. Though it's only been a few minutes, it feels like an eternity to me. It's here. I quickly opened the mail. From John Tyler. Where did you find that? That's written in proprietary IBM programming language used prior to 1975. You can only decipher it with an IBM 5100. <laughs> Just as I suspected. Huh? I was right, Daru. I know where this data comes from. An IBM 5100? That retro PC has a certain special function. In fact, for more than 25 years after it went to market in 1975, nobody knew of it save a few IBM engineers. That function was first brought to light by John Titer, who appeared in 2000. A while after Titer posted about it, an actual IBM engineer admitted to the hidden function's existence. Which reminds me, I talked to Suzaha about this only yesterday. It can also decipher IBM's proprietary programming language, which was written before APL and BASIC became widespread. Isn't that surprising? Now it's a dead programming language only decipherable with an IBM 5100. What an incredible coincidence. Prime example of synchronicity at work. It's almost like an almighty will is pulling the strings. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I say, this discovery of ours was inevitable from the start. But this is the choice of Stein's Gate. Wait, so CERN is an IBM 5100 database. Those machines aren't compatible with any modern software. Why wouldn't they do something like that? Answer me this. What is the best way to secure a machine against external cracking? Well, make it stand alone, of course. If only IBM 5100s can read it, then I guess that's kind of standalone. Which means that CERN's keeping their most important secrets hidden there. How do you know about that hidden function anyway? It is recorded in my brain's extensive Index Librorum Prohibitorum. Titus said it himself ten years ago, but Terry wouldn't believe me even if I told him the truth. Very original. I ignore Daru's retort. Mayuri. Mayuri, we have important matters to discuss. Assemble! Hmm, I can hear you fine from here. It doesn't matter whether you can hear or not. This meeting concerns the fate of the future gadget laboratory. Nay, the future of mankind. So I want it to feel more secretive, like we're scheming or something. It's important that we stare closely at the monitor and exchange dramatic lines. The atmosphere right now is too... light. It's all Mayuri's fault. Mayushi won't participate in your evil schemes. Well, I can't have everything my way. Listen you two, henceforth the Future Gadget Laboratory shall begin emergency top secret operations. This shall be the first stage in our war against the dark powers that manipulate the world from the shadows. Our enemy is CERN, a scientific institute engaged in the most evil research imaginable. Ocarine, you're too loud. I've been up all night. Crap. I guess I am being too loud. That kind of ruins the whole secret feeling. And the window's open too. If Suzuho is down below, I'm sure she can hear everything. Understand? The world has no need for two mad scientists. Before they can get ahead of us, we must outwit them. Who are they? You know. Them. Um, Mayushi doesn't get it at all. Basically, we must obtain the Phantom Retro PC, the IBM 5100, said to be located somewhere in a keeper. I make a magnificent declaration, but Dari just rubs his eyes, and Mayuri's focus returns to her book. 
damn it. Is there anything you guys react to? We've uncovered a massive conspiracy here. How come you aren't excited? I'll pass on the search, I'm seriously tired. Besides, I want to keep combing soon, so... That's true. Well, you're the only one who can do that, Daru, so I'll leave it to you. So, the IBM 5100 investigation squad shall consist of Mayuri and me. I... Oh. I have to make costumes, and I have work, too. She says that, but she certainly seems relaxed. <clears throat> so basically, you two are telling me this. I'm the only one with free time. Fine. I'll manage alone somehow. It's useless to try and stop me. Understood? Are you going to do something bad again? Yeah. No, he's all talk. I leave my useless comrades behind and stride gallantly out of the lab. I descend the stairs and step out onto the street, only for a bicycle to barrel towards me from the direction of Kurumabashi Dori and dramatically skid to a stop right in front of me. Hi! Hiya! Okabe Rintaro? Pretty nice technique there. Bicycles are fun, aren't they? I've never ridden one before coming here. You've never ridden a bicycle? Nope. I'd ridden motorcycles before, though. I can't help but be restless. Every time my mind almost settles, it's filled with the thoughts of the curious microwave experiments of the future gadget laboratory. Going to work now? Yep. The Braun Tube Workshop's shutters are open, but the shop itself never opens until around 11 or 12. I don't know exactly when. It seems to change with Mr. Braun's mood. It's perfect. There's something we need to talk about. Eh? I need to get the shop ready for business. Just what does this crummy old brawn tube workshop need to get ready? Nothing really. Jeez, I just mindlessly sweep in front of the shop. If I clean inside, the boss gets angry. Everything's where it needs to be, he says. So he's paying her to not clean? So hear me out then. Does it have to be right now? My glare is not very effective. She doesn't falter at all. Then go ahead. But keep it short, okay? Where is the IBM 5100? No intel yet. But by the way you talked yesterday, it sure sounded like you knew. No, I know someone who knows. Then take me to them. I won't take no for an answer. Refuse and I'll show you a living hell. I can't. Come on, I even said I'd show you a living hell. I can't introduce you even if I wanted to. What do you mean? Don't tell me they're an imaginary. They've been dead for years. Oh. I'm sorry. Nah, it's okay. Anyway, there's nothing I can tell you. Honestly, I'm hoping you can tell me something. Hey, you part-timer, it's only your third day and you're late. Sorry boss, the streets are a little crowded this morning. If you're not going to take this seriously, I can always give you the boot here. As for you, Akabe, don't you lay a finger on my part-timer. Aren't you the lecherous one here, Mr. Braun? Why, you just try saying something like that in front of Nate. Oh, murder you. I've got to keep my honor as a father. Besides, I ain't got no use for a skinny kid like her. What was that? Take that back, boss. What, you mad? I'm not a kid. I'm a warrior. Huh? What are you talking about? I like the look in your eyes, you part-time warrior. They shine with the radiance of the beast unseen in modern men. Never forget those eyes of yours, and you shall surely change class from part-time warrior to true warrior. But I'm already a warrior. 
Stay diligent in your training and you shall have a place at my side on the field of Ragnarok. Ragnarok? What's that? The final battle against Cern. You've got something like that planned? Count me in if you do, but I've never heard of it. Of course you haven't. This is the first time I've revealed it. For I shall be the one to initiate Ragnarok, and the world shall be reborn! Wow, you sure are brave, Akabe Rintaro. You probably failed, but I like your spirit. I wish my comrades were as spirited as you are. Apparently, Suzuha has comrades. I'd like her to introduce me. That way I can form my personal army, the Phoenix Crusaders. Wait a sec. Why does she assume I'll fail at Ragnarok? Looks like I need to instill the fear of Hoin Kyoma into this girl. Why does my store attract nothing but weirdos? Damn. Whatever part time, I just come inside. Coming. Later, Okabe Rintaro. Don't tell me you plan to face them head on, but that will turn a keep into a sea of blood and yarn. Restrain yourself, Kyoma. It's from Faris. There's no way I can combat this. So you're going to help me search after Rob. That's the lab men spirit. Oh no, that's not it. I was thinking about buying lunch. <laughs> She really is a glutton. It's not even lunchtime yet. So, where do you plan to go? Sambo's beef bowl sounds good. But Sambo isn't open this early. I try to warn her, but Miyuri is no longer there. She's gone. Miyuri disappears like this every so often, and each time she does, I wonder for one terrible second if she really has vanished from the world. I look around and see Mayuri standing at a distance. She's gazing up at the sky through the buildings. Here we go again. She's stopped in the middle of the street. So other pedestrians look at her, wondering what she's doing. But she doesn't notice their stares. She slowly reaches out to the sky, as if entranced. And then, she freezes in that position. This is one of Mayuri's habits. I call it Stardust Handshake. Mayuri says that she's liked looking at the night sky ever since she was little. Her reason is romantic, or perhaps childish. I feel like I can reach the stars. When I asked her about it one day, she just smiled and gave that answer. At first she only reached out to the night sky, but lately she's been doing it without regard to the time of day. Like now, something inside her just seems to switch on. Honestly, it's a little crazy. It's too early for stars, Mayuri. I walk up to Mayuri and call out to her. She slowly lowers her hand with a blank smile on her face. Did you know, even during the day, the stars are still up there. Getting philosophical is nice and all, but it's dangerous to stop in the middle of the street. <laughs> That's true. Oh, just now, when I was looking at the stars, I decided to have ramen for lunch today. How are ramen and stars even related? Mayuri's mind works in mysterious ways. I can't help but be restless. Every time my mind almost settles, it's filled with the thoughts of the curious microwave experiments at the Future Gadget Laboratory. I'm a scientist. It's only natural I'd get uneasy when I'm presented with a question that doesn't have an answer. Though I suppose there's no use thinking about it here. Right, the laundry. I should probably take care of that. I know I said I'd search for the IBM 5100, but I have no idea where to start. I know Daru is well acquainted with retro PCs, but is there anyone else? Oh yeah, Shining Finger was obsessed with the IBM 5100, wasn't she? I'm really reluctant to contact that male demon though. But ultimately, my feelings are trivial. Ragnarok hangs in the balance. 
I don't know Shining Finger's phone number, so I'll just send her an email for the time being. And then comes an email. It's from Shining Finger. From Shining Finger, regarding Call Me. Thanks for the email. I've been waiting. I don't like talking on the phone, so let's exchange emails instead. That's a quick reply. But I asked her to call. So why did she reply by email? Wait, she wants it by email? That's a lot to cover. I'd rather not have to type it all out. I need to find out her phone number. Give me your phone number along with any information you have on the IBN 5100. And send. I look up after finishing my email to see a crowd of people in front of Radikan. I guess people are still curious. Of course, the satellite is still there. Not 30 seconds pass before I get a reply. Ah. Well, if it isn't my assistant, what are you doing here? Hey, when did I become your assistant? She looks like she'll snap at me, so to dampen her spirit, I go back to checking my email. From Shining Finger, let's both do our best. I don't have anything. How about you, Moika? I told her to tell me her phone number, and she just ignored me. And she doesn't even have any information. How useless can you be? Why are you glaring at me? Don't worry about it. You're not the cause of my frustration. Oh, so you're just raging? Don't glare at me. You glared at me before, haven't you? That's because you kept doing pervy. Ah, uh, no, I'm not saying anything. Another one? From Shining Finger, call me. Tell me the super hacker's address, Moika. I want to snap my phone in half and throw it on the ground. What do you mean, tell me the super hacker's address? Are you making fun of me with that musical's note? You're not getting anything from me. Are the emails you're getting really that unpleasant? They're more unreasonable than unpleasant. Can't quite describe it in one word. Stop sending me all those short emails. I'm begging you, just gather your thoughts and send everything together. I feel a little satisfied after sending that email. So, Christina, what brings you here? If you're going to call me names, could you at least be consistent? Anyway, my business here doesn't concern you. Why are you pouting? I'm not pouting. I just don't want to get involved in your silly games again. Nonsense. You're already a lab member. You have a duty to work for the benefit of the lab. I regret losing myself to curiosity back then. Did you come to see the satellite? I guess. It doesn't make sense. Normally they calculate satellites' orbit so that they burn up in the atmosphere when they fall. So how can that thing be in such perfect condition? Where's this satellite from, anyway? They still don't know. Rumors say it's from the former Soviet Union, but Russia denies it. So it looks like they can't remove it yet. Three days have passed and it's still unknown. How interesting. I smell a conspiracy. So it's a, another organization cover-up. They knew I'd be at Radikan and tried to erase me. Organization? What's that? The organization is the organization. Its formal name is something else, but all those who know of its existence call it the organization out of fear. They rule the world from the shadows, transcending nations with politics, economics, religion, even science in their clutches. That's obviously a crackpot conspiracy theory, thank you very much. What's wrong? N nothing, really? Nothing, okay? Say another word and I hit you. Crazy girl. Anyway, what's happened with the phone line? I thought you didn't want to get involved. And it's not the phone wave, it's the phone wave name subject to change. Just answer me, have you learned anything? No progress. We've tried repeating the experiment, but at present we haven't been able to reproduce the discharge phenomenon or we'll send another email to the past. I see. Another email. Damn you, Shining Finger. 
I said not to send so many short emails, but she doesn't seem to get it. I can't handle this male demon. Rom Shining Finger. Sorry. Are you mad at me? Sorry for being pushy. But I really need info on the IBN 5100. You're the only lead I have, Akubi. Con? That's why I pestered you so much. I promise I won't send you one-line messages anymore. Hmm? Looks like she's rethinking things. Hopefully I don't have to worry about any more email assaults. Hello? Can you put your phone away when you're talking with someone? Don't be like that. Rather, you should praise me, for I have taught a foul male demon to behave like a civilized human being. Why are you so pompous? I'd ask you the same thing, Christina. <laughs> okay, let's send a reply. Apology accepted. I'm looking for an IBN 5100 too. I agree that we should exchange information. I'll let you know when I have something. You don't need to reply to this mail. I type that out and send it. Are you done with your little mail exchange, Ho Wen san? Oh, so you remember my true name. Indeed, I am Ho Wen Kyoma. I was being facetious. How was that facetious? You called me by my correct name. You made no mistake. You'll make a good assistant. Okabe-san. Have you sought professional help? I am not Okabe. This is exhausting. An awkward silence hung in the air until Kurosu suddenly asked if there were any coin laundries nearby. It seems she has some clothes that need cleaning. Hoping that it would buy me leverage in the future, I escort her to the coin laundry I frequent. So, about the phone wave. Name subject to change. After the experiment, you scream something like, Time machine? It can't be. Did something awaken a past trauma? No. And don't go making one up either. Back when she was five years old, Christina was on the plains of Arkansas when lightning... I wasn't hit by lightning. And I was still living in Japan when I was five. And why Arkansas? I was trying to imagine tranquil scenery. And the first state to come to mind was Arkansas. Second was Oregon. Not Utah? I mean, relatively speaking, isn't Utah more suitable? Then answer me, Christina. Why did you freak out back then? No reason. I simply didn't want to believe fringe science should stay in the realm of fiction. Fringe science? Don't be ridiculous. You saw it with your own eyes. You saw the email leaked to the past. You saw the banana travel instantly through space. I saw, but we must be missing something. Or maybe we're just seeing what we want to see. Remember what I said at ATF? Time machines are just a pipe dream, given modern technology. And yet a bunch of amateurs, like you, just stick a phone and a microwave together and expect time travel to occur? Ridiculous. But it did occur. Will you deny what you saw with your own eyes? Are you saying that theories trump reality? Then I hope you enjoy soap history and word games, because that's all you'll ever have. What do you mean, word games? Quantum theory, for example. If you ask me, theories like that are nothing but word games. Wait, you're rejecting modern physics. Who do you think you are? Trust what you see. The only things that matter are things that happen. Things that don't happen, things that aren't observed, are just hypotheses. When hypotheses pile up and theories are verified, they become reality. That's how modern physics comes to understand the truth of the universe. But sometimes your hypotheses are mistaken. Even Einstein was wrong about some things. So you're going to do nothing just because you could be wrong? Then enjoy your dirty little lab and your silly gadgets because that's all you'll ever have. You'll never reach the truth that way. Failure teaches success. I see. Nice rebuttal. You're never 
getting off your high horse, are you? By the way, Christina, I've always felt that physicists are hypocrites. 